What's going on everybody? I want to take you along on this 2014 Ford Taurus with a 3.5 non-turbo, so it's not an EcoBoost engine, that was having a lot of uh, issues running drivability problems. Now it just had an engine replaced, which I found out as I was doing the diagnosis of it. On the test drive, as you'll see, I was pretty confident that this thing had a restricted exhaust, and we do some quick tests and some other things to verify that. I personally was thrown off at the shop because they had told me that they checked for that, which kind of like makes me double check everything I do. But once we got the scope on there, it was pretty obvious. It's a little anemic. If I stomp on it, it's really breaking up under a load. Almost feel like I can hear some popping back through the intake. We do have a check engine light on. Light throttle feels good. Full throttle. It's breaking up. No power. Light acceleration feels okay. When I first uh, got in the vehicle on a light acceleration, it felt great. This is a very whooped on police vehicle. Seatbelt broken, can't even buckle my seatbelt. Okay, so getting in here and scanning this, we have 304, 305, and 306. So it looks like bank two has got misfires all through it. I think I'm going to go ahead and do a quick uh, relative compression test using our scan tool here and we'll see what comes up. Long go. Well, actually, we just put one in uh, yesterday. Okay. Okay. That. <laughs> okay, so looks like cylinder four five and six we got a little bit of low on six there for sure but it's all that back bank kind of looking low at this point i want to take a look at the fuel trims just take a look at what our uh, long-term fuel trim short term for bank one and bank two are see if we have a bank to bank difference Long term or short term fuel trim for bank one is about 1.5 percent, short term for bank two is about negative five. So there is an imbalance here. Let me go ahead and bring it up a little bit on RPM. Let's take a look at the long term. Our long term is at zeros, and I sometimes when an engine is running so poorly. Uh, long-term fuel trims don't start counting. You have to understand, your short-term fuel trim may adjust very fast and the long-term fuel trim kind of follows. But when an engine's running very poorly uh, and misfiring, such as this instance, you'll have fuel trims, uh, long-term fuel trims that don't count. But looking at their short terms here, we definitely have a bank-to-bank -bank imbalance with our short-term fuel trims. And you see we have about a a large difference bank to bank. At this point, the bank to bank imbalance in fuel trims was definitely leading us on the right path to know that we have a restriction in exhaust or a breathing problem bank to bank. All right, so we went into cylinder number four over here. If I just take a section and zoom in on it, I want to show you one little piece of, one little slice of time. I can already tell you based on my experience, I see a rising trend in our exhaust plateau. So this is a capture here at idle on this vehicle. So we're just going to go ahead and zoom in. And you can see the trend right away, just like before. We can tell something's going on there. We can see a rising pressure on the exhaust plateau. That's definitely an issue going on. Also, I captured a snap throttle test. And as you see here, we have a lot of pressure uh, building up. If you look at this, if we just drop a uh, cursor in here, see where we're at here in the median of our exhaust plateau. Uh, that's like 20 PSI. This is too much. This is a big problem. Also, we have the, I have a reference waveform picture of when we took out the front O2. So this is a bank two oxygen sensor was removed. The pink trace in the back here is with the oxygen sensor removed and the uh, red trace is with the oxygen sensor in. So I just thought that was pretty cool that we can do a reference waveform and see what's going on there. If you have questions about the reference waveforms and doing stuff like that, be sure to check out some of the courses at Hands-On Auto Training 
Pico.com. Uh, for the core course, I am working on a larger PicoScope class. It's going to be pretty good for everybody that's a member. For those of you still following along with this video, I wanted to talk about determining the root cause of a failure. Whenever we're replacing a component, especially a catalytic converter, it's really good to take a good look around at the vehicle and make sure there isn't an underlying cause. In this instance, I'm pretty sure this thing probably was driving around with a misfire for some time. It could have been because of the faulty engine that was replaced, or maybe a bad coil. Those have all been replaced as well. I did tell the shop, make sure that when you get the new converter in this thing, start it up, run it, check your codes, watch your fuel trims, take it for a good drive, and make sure we don't have an underlying uh, cause of a meltdown of a converter. Something else I wanted to share about this particular vehicle is when I first started it, a cold start, getting into the vehicle to start it for a test drive, it ran really well until it went into closed loop. Hey, thanks a lot for taking the time to watch this video. If you like this content, please do like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this information with fellow technicians that may benefit from it. I'd appreciate that. You can follow us at Hands On Auto Training on Facebook. Check out HandsOnAutoTraining.com once again for the course information. I appreciate everybody's support. Have a great day.